Okay, let's get started on this $2 lunches. Main ingredients are rice, this corn and chili salsa, which is tomatoless, and I'm really excited to try it. I've never had it, but you can definitely substitute just a regular tomato salsa, some beans. Since I'm making five lunches, my cost roughly comes out to about $2 per lunch. I have some leftover frozen green beans and leftover baby carrots. And then back here, I just have some olive oil spray, seasonings, and then some extra rice because I need to fill up my rice. All right, let's get started with the rice first. <laughs> me crazy but I actually prefer my rice not rinse the texture is so much better to me but I get so many questions when I don't rinse my rice so I was like okay I'm gonna rinse it and convince myself that I do like it that way no I don't I don't know it's just different um but I think next time I'm gonna add like a tablespoon of sugar because I read on google that that will kind of help bring back the texture but I use the same method every single time to make my rice I've tried so many different mes methods instant pot crock pot stove top and um, oven. The oven one is good if you don't want to like sit and babysit it. Someone was making fun of me in a comment on my rice video last week. I saw it was like a comment that popped up in that video is like over a year old. They're making fun of me because I took so long to make rice. I'm like, well, then you don't have to babysit it. Like sometimes you have to babysit rice. I know you don't have to babysit an instant pot too, but let's not make fun of people because we try different methods. <laughs> Everybody has their own preference. But I also decided to go ahead and make corn uh, black bean salsa. I always rinse my beans, personal preference. I guess that's kind of how this whole video is, right? Like we all like to do things our own way. I think that black beans and this chili lime seasoning go hand in hand. I know that there's another company that makes a chili lime seasoning that you can get at a national grocery store, not just Trader Joe's. So check the shelf next time you're there if you don't have a Trader Joe's local to you. But I love it so much because it adds just a little bit of heat and then a little bit of sweetness and tang from the lime. And I feel like black beans just have to go with chili lime seasoning. It's so delicious. If you cannot find this corn salsa that I'm using, go ahead and just get a black bean and corn salsa at your store. I know even Walmart carries one. I know years ago we used to get one that had like pineapple in it. It was really, really good. But this is awesome. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, I highly recommend picking it up if they have it in stock. They had it in stock a couple weeks ago, so I don't think it's a summer product. But it's sweet corn and chili. And since it's tomato free, it just brings a whole new level to salsa. It is so good. I could just eat this out of the jar, which... I probably did while filming this. <laughs> it's really, really good. I'm going to have to stock up on it and keep it on hand because black beans, corn, and rice together are one of my favorite meals. And right now I'm like kind of edgy on vegetables just because it's a pregnancy problem. So I'll add them to every meal, but I don't always eat them just depending on if I want them or not. So that's why I didn't make very many vegetables in case you're wondering like, how is that lasting for five meals? It's just my five meals right now. Might be different for your five meals. So I took those vegetables, I put them on a baking sheet and I sprayed a little bit of oil on it. Just again, what I've decided to do today, sometimes I use aluminum foil, sometimes parchment paper. I wanted a little bit of oil on them to roast the carrots so that they were like really, really delicious. And then I would be more intrigued to eat them little salt and a little of that chili lime seasoning. Chili lime seasoning on carrots, also big win. Um, it kind of has a tahine kind of flavor to it, but not quite as spicy. So I guess you could always get that as a substitute too, because that is something you can get all over, but they're, they are very different. So nice and roasty on the veggies, lots of rice. I will go ahead and I just put the ingredients in separate containers to put in the refrigerator for later in the week, but I'm showing you one meal all put together. And this was super delicious. Since I made this in the morning, I actually had this for like a breakfast. It was really good. 
Um, I think sometimes when I'm cooking the item, it is more appealing than when it's left over right now. So I think it's just kind of like, well, it is what it is. This is for breakfast. But I'm actually going to share with you what we had for lunch this day. Because as I was putting this together, I also wanted to make lunch. And I put up a video, I think it was Tuesday. It was the last video I put up making a cheese sauce. And I get so many questions every time I put up a recipe with cheese sauce if I don't share all the recipes that I make with it because there's a lot of people that are coming new to my channel, haven't been here for a while. So I thought, okay, since I'm going to make this for lunch anyways, I might as well film it, get it started and share with you what I'm doing with it. So I told you guys in the last video, I use the cheese sauce for tacos. We use it for nachos, lasagna, mac and cheese. I use it like I do a queso and you'll see here in a minute, it's very, very firm. So it firms up if you put it in the refrigerator because it's a starch. So for this recipe, I'm just using three ingredients and it worked out really, really well that total, the cost per serving of this meal was right around $2 too. So it fits kind of into this niche of this video because I had about $8 worth of ingredients when I did the math, four servings, $2 per serving. So if you can't find barbecue jackfruit, you can make your own. Just get a can of jackfruit. It's You can find it all over. Sometimes I get it on Thrive Market. You can always find it at a local grocery store. Whole Foods has it. Whatever you have near you, you can even get it on Amazon. And then you can just add your own barbecue sauce to it. So you don't have to buy the packet, but the packet is really convenient. We like getting them at Trader Joe's because we can make tacos really quickly. We can make mac and cheese. We can eat it out of the bag. It's, it's really good on nachos too. But anyways, just giving you guys some ideas. So I go ahead and make my brown rice pasta per the directions on the box. And if you're wondering, because I get a lot of questions on this, I don't use as much water when making brown rice pasta. I saw that trick on Food, mar food Market, <laughs> Food Network one time. And I don't know if it's like a good tip or not good tip. I do it all the time. It works for me. When it comes to reheating the pasta, the texture is better. So I use less water. I'm not really sure the science behind it, but it does work for when you're reheating it. It looks weird, but I don't know, something about the reheat process, it works okay for me. So I go ahead and rinse my pasta to completely stop the cooking process. This also helps if you rinse it in really, really cold water. Then I put it back into the hot pot and I add the cheese. And you'll see the cheese is really, really firm. Um, this is another question I get all the time because it is a starch and it doesn't like, okay, also it doesn't really taste like cheese. It has like a tanginess and it works, but like it's not dairy. So it's not going to taste, if you eat a lot of cheese, it's not going to taste like cheese. But if you're like me who hasn't had cheese in like six years, it's going to fit the bill for that tanginess that you're looking for. So as you see, it's solidified and you don't have to worry about warming it up pre-putting it with the pasta because once you put it in the oven, you'll see in a little bit, it gets nice and bubbly and smooth. But I do kind of like to mix it a little bit to kind of incorporate it with the pasta. And since the pasta is a little bit hot and the cheese is still cold from the refrigerator, it helps to stop the cooking of the pasta. So then my texture, I'm not like losing that texture with the brown rice pasta. So, but then anyways, I just put it in a eight by eight baking dish. And this was not quite a full pound of pasta. I believe it was just like one serving short. Go ahead and put it in there. Add the jackfruit on the top, put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes. When it comes out, it's bubbly and hot and delicious. I let it sit for a few minutes before serving it. This is also a great freezer meal. I would just prep it just like this, put the jackfruit on top, and then put it in the freezer. And then when you pull it out, put it directly into the oven from the freezer and bake it for about an hour at 400 degrees. It'll be nice and bubbly and delicious if you need a freezer idea meal. But like I said, if you can't find the jackfruit, make your own, super easy. Find your favorite barbecue sauce, find some jackfruit, mix it up. It's really, really good. Um, tacos, pizza, we sometimes eat it with just rice, nachos. I mean, this is kind of like a mock pulled pork mac and cheese, which I feel like is really popular, but we're just making it different today. And it makes your kitchen smell so good. <laughs> it smells so homey and so delicious.
Okay, let's talk about this cheese sauce. So it actually has cashews in it, so it's so much creamier than the cheese sauce I used to make years ago, but you don't have to add the cashews if you don't want to. You can just leave them out. But I use a half a cup of cashews, about a pound of Yukon Gold potatoes. It's also really, really good if you use a white sweet potato or even just a traditional orange sweet potato. Really good. It changes the texture a little bit, changes the taste. I prefer it with sweet potatoes. My husband prefers it with Yukon, so we kind of switch back and forth. But I go ahead and heat my cashews, if you will. I saw this method on my friend's YouTube channel, Alyssa All Day. I add just boiling water over the top of them and let them sit for about five minutes. It makes them so when you blend them, they're like a little bit softer and they blend really, really smooth. So I go ahead and chop my potatoes and I just had baby carrots. The baby carrots that you saw in the beginning of the recipe were actually left over from the ones I used in this recipe video. So worked out really well. But I go ahead and just chop them, put them in cold water with carrots. And then if I didn't already say, I use about eight ounces of carrots. I kind of just eyeball things because it always turns out. If I add a little extra potato or a little extra carrot or a little extra cashew or whatever, it just kind of turns out. I've made it so many times and I love recipes that, like that, that you can just kind of guesstimate. It's not baking, it's, so it's not a science. Um, I feel like baking is like literally the only thing you need an actual recipe for that you need to follow because it's science, but like cooking, you just kind of throw things together. So like I said, I just throw them in cold water, bring it to a boil. When they're nice and tender, then I take it off the water and put it all in a high-speed blender. If you don't have a high-speed blender, you can use an immersion blender. Um, you have to be careful if you don't have either of those. You can put it in a food processor. You just have to be careful that it's not super hot and not super liquidy because it will leak out the top. So, But like I said, we use this for so many things. I have a ton of recipes here on my channel. It's mixed into different videos using this sauce. I will try to link some down below. And hopefully then you can click on those and get some more ideas. But we use it for nachos. We use it for mac and cheese. We use it for um, pizza. I, I've used it for anything that you could think that you would use like a queso for or a liquid cheese. And it's really, really good. So here I am just rinsing my cashews. Or not rinsing them, excuse me, just draining them. And then I actually add about a cup and a half of the cooking water from the potatoes into this recipe too. And I get questions on this. Um, I don't add the liquid from the cashews because it's kind of already at room temperature by the time it's sitting for five minutes, but the boiling water from the potatoes is nice and hot, so it makes everything really creamy. And if you're wondering what I added, I added some mustard, some nutritional yeast, which adds a really nice tang, and then um, I added a little bit of salt. The only thing I didn't add this day that I always add is about a tablespoon or two of lemon juice. It also adds just a little bit of tang, but I didn't have any on hand. I thought, well... It should be fine and it was still good without it. So go ahead and blend that up and it'll be nice and smooth. You can eat also, if you have a Vitamix, you can use like the little pulser thing that comes with it to kind of get it all together. But it ends up being so thick and so creamy. If you want it to be like more liquidized, you can just add a little bit more of the water. You can kind of play with the ratios a little bit depending on what you're using it for. But it's really good. It's really good as a dipping sauce. You can add a ton of different seasonings to it. If you want to add some dill or some chili, it's really, really good. So like I said, we use as, we use as a pizza sauce once. And it was really, really good with some homemade pizza crust and a bunch of toppings. You can see how liquidy and smooth it is. Thanks so much for being here for my $2 lunch inspiration. I hope you got some great inspiration for your next coming week of lunches. Maybe you have all these ingredients on hand already in your fridge, freezer, and pantry, and you can whip up these meals. Make sure you subscribe for more recipe videos. I try to put one out a week, but recently I've been doing two a week. So I will see you on Tuesday with another fun recipe. Bye-bye.